Hi everyone, it's Raza Von Werder, a.k.a. Kelly Everts, talking about my private and personal life. And right now I'm talking about what good was the abuse? And I'm not done explaining the abuse yet either. I still have a lot more anecdotes about it. But for the time being, I'm taking a break and talking about the tools. So if they tell me today, now, as a child, I didn't know what I know now, but I knew the basics. I knew God created me. I knew God loved me. I believed in Jesus. I saw his example. I heard a lot of sermons. I knew my prayers. I had great faith and great hope and great love. I always had a great heart. I was born with a great heart. Always had love and always will. No one, no matter what they did to me, they could not stop my love. I, could, I did not stop loving God. I never stopped loving myself. <clears throat> I never stopped loving others. <clears throat> I never turned demonic. <clears throat> it was like Satan was attacking me. And Satan's been attacking me all my life. Satan attacks the people who are close to God more so than he, it, attacks the nobodies. If you are chosen by God, if you are close to God, if you have a good heart, if you are working for the kingdom of God, the demons will attack you more than anyone else. Just like they attack Jesus. Why? Because you are fighting their evil kingdom. You are their greatest enemy. You are fighting their kingdom and you are going to get rid of them. You get rid of demons. You are love. How do the demons recognize Jesus? You know, you wonder about that. How did they know he was this great son of God? How did they know? The demons knew it better than the regular people did because they felt his love. The regular people were insensitive for some reason. They didn't automatically recognize him as the great savior, the great messiah, the great uh, son of God. They didn't recognize him as easily at times. Some of them did, you know, but a lot of them didn't. The average one was doubtful and wanted signs and wonders and wanted proof. But the demons immediately knew. They felt his love for some reason because they're maybe on that plane on the other side and they can feel energies and vibrations more easily and because they are in danger of being removed or evaporated or sent to hell wherever, you know. So they were frightened. The regular people were less sensitive, but they knew their moment was coming the minute Jesus attended to them he would remove them. So they were scared. And they said, Oh, Son of God, why do you come and get us before our time? Leave us alone. Blah, blah, blah. Well, demons attack, and I've heard this from many ministers. I didn't invent this or think of this on my own. I've heard this from great teachers. Satan knows from the beginning when a child is real young, if they have a great heart, just like they can see Jesus. They saw Jesus. They recognized him. They recognized people with pure, open, wonderful hearts. Not everybody has a great, big, pure, wonderful, open heart. Even children. There are nasty... T My brother did not have a great, big, pure, open heart. He was nasty. I call him my evil brother. My evil brother didn't have a big heart, good heart. He's in heaven. He made it. He succeeded. But <clears throat> they attack you more than anyone else because you are dangerous to them. So every saint and every person who is going to succeed with God, you know, there's a saying, I heard my priest, Father Vivona, say this one time. He said, all saints have to go through hell before they get to heaven. Demons try to kill children who are 
filled with love, great love, and big hearts. Satan was trying to kill me through my brother, trying to get me to get that stick, spear, impaled into my vagina. And then it would have gone, if it had gone in my vagina, it probably would have gone into my intestines, my bowels. And the intestinal material would have mixed with my blood and given me peritonitis, blood poisoning. And you can die from blood poisoning within a few days. But God or my guardian angels diverted that spear when it hit the rock. And it went into my thigh, my upper thigh. I still have the scar. It's like two and a half inches long and three quarters of an inch thick, the scar. My whole, the, the, at the time, the, 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 the wound was about, it almost covered my whole thigh. And my mother did not take me to the doctor to have it sewed up. So that was Satan. That was Satan trying to kill me before I could do the work of God. And my work of God was, I was specifically sent, and I know, I know this, I've learned it through the years. I'm an avatar. In, in um, yoga, they call it an avatar. An avatar is one who is sent by God as a, on a special mission. A mission, God sends you. And you volunteer. You were once already a soul that went to heaven and you don't have to come back to earth. But according to this theory, the person who is an avatar agrees or even asks, I suppose, to come back to earth on a special mission to do a special work for God. So that's what I am. And my special mission was female is female empowerment. There's a lot that goes with it. Mother God, I'm teaching Mother God, I, I, I'm teaching uh, veneration of women, and worship of God as a mother. You know, I'm teaching people about union with God, because I, I have to have union with God to do what I do. It's the, the empowerment of women. I have, to, I have to have her power. I have to have her power. So I have to be there. I have to be the person. And Jesus, you know, look, look at the sufferings he went through to become who he was. From the age of 12 to 29, the, the, the wise men came and got him when he was 12. He disappeared. The wise men came and got him and took him to India because they knew who he was. And there from 12 to 29, he was trained. He was trained in a Buddhist religion, Buddhism. And the Beatitudes is pure Buddhism. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are those who are persecuted for my sake. And the it's all the blessedness of all the people in poverty, persecution, suffering, torture, etc., it's all, they're all, the blessing of it, the blessedness of it. So now if somebody tells you, you're worthless, you go, I'm a creation of God, I'm a child of God. See, these are tools, tools. I am created by God and God loves me. So you can hate me all you want, but you don't determine my happiness and my future and my everlasting life. God does. God is within me. So they treat you like you're no good. You're worthless. God is within me. They tell you you're a sinner. Well, maybe you are and you committed crimes. Maybe you committed terrible crimes. But you, you assert, God loves me even though I committed crimes. God forgives me when I ask for forgiveness. I am forgiven if I ask, if I repent. And all you got to do is say, God, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. I repent of my sins. And you are forgiven, but you got to mean it. You got to mean it. And with all your heart, try to stop sinning, whatever it is. Now, a lot of people, I'm going to talk about sex, because a lot of people, when I start talking in public, 
Almost everywhere I go, including Binghamton University, when I speak to sororities and fraternities and students, they all, every one of them wants to know about sex. So I'm going to talk about sex for a break. To be